Barakim Haburim, welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Brook, and well, you know who you are. On this 22nd day of June, 2021, the day after the longest day of the year. Although I think we can all agree some days just seem so much longer than 24 hours. Anyway, <clears throat> I've been posting for almost an entire week, and later on, I'll tell you why. Well, Shaul. That nice Jewish tent maker from Tarsus, when he wrote to the believers in Rome, he talked about grace and obedience. Now, for most Christians, they have been mistaught that this letter confirms that because grace overcomes sin, well, we are no longer under the law. Even though in chapters 5 and 6, he specifically states that grace does not allow anyone to continue to sin, well, Christianity has taught that the law is irrelevant because we are under grace. Well, here's the kicker, folks. Without the law, there is no grace. Shaul also tells us in this letter that the Torah created sin, Romans 5.13. And what he meant by that is that if, if there's nothing officially stating what is right or wrong, so to speak, then there may be a cultural a de facto understanding of what is okay and what isn't, but there is no authoritative, in other words, a de jure way to enforce that understanding. See, and many people have been misinformed through their pastors, ministers, or priests that Yeshua did away with the law because we are now under grace. <laughs> but again, without the law, there is only lawlessness I mean, that's an a priori fact of life. If there is no law, there can only be lawlessness. There is no middle of the road here, no gray matter, no subtle hues of color. It's black or white. You know, it's right or wrong. It, it's truth or lies. Grace doesn't exist if there is nothing to receive grace from. Let me say that again. <clears throat> grace doesn't exist if there's nothing to receive grace from. If you believe that you are under grace, then you must also be under obedience to God. Maybe you like it said that way better. Shaul tells us this when he said, again, in Romans 5 and 6, that we were all slaves to sin, but now we are slaves to righteousness. In other words, where Torah couldn't save you, through Yeshua you can receive grace, which does save you. <laughs> but, but... That doesn't mean you can ignore the law, or as Shaul puts it, continue to sin. Look, it's as simple as this. The Torah can't save us, but not because following the Torah doesn't make us righteous. The Torah can't save us because we can't follow it correctly. <laughs> the fault doesn't lie within the Torah. It lies within us, and it's called iniquity. And because God wants everyone to have eternal life, <laughs> read Ezekiel 18.23. Because he wants everyone to have eternal life, he sent the Messiah to provide a way for us to overcome our iniquity. That does not mean the Torah is done away with, but simply that where we fail to obey the Torah, Grace is provided through Messiah to allow us to be forgiven of that failure to obey. Here's something else. God's grace, it only counts on the spiritual plane. In the real world, there are always consequences of sin. When someone breaks the law, I'm talking about real world law, the judge has the authority to deal out punishment as he or she sees fit, which is a form of grace. As such, you may be given community service instead of jail time, but you will have to pay one way or another. However, again, just because even the human legal system allows the judge to show leniency or have grace, that doesn't mean that you can break the law. And it's the same way with God's grace and Torah obedience. God gave his instructions for worshiping him and treating each other to Moses 
to teach the Jewish people, who God says is his nation of priests. That's Exodus 19.6. And as such, they will teach the world how God wants us all, us all, to live. Yeshua did nothing to change that other than to teach us the deeper spiritual meaning of the Torah commandments. <laughs> Grace is a wonderful thing, but it isn't the whole enchilada. When we faithfully do what we can to obey and please the Lord, as he said we should in the Torah, God promises we will receive blessings. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28. And thanks to Yeshua, when we fail to obey, we can receive forgiveness, which is what we call grace. Well, thank you for being here. Please like my Facebook page, share these messages with everyone you know, and subscribe. Subscribe to the website in the right-hand margin of the website where the subscribe button is, and on the YouTube channel, click the little icons down there and subscribe to YouTube. And this way, you'll be contacted next time I post. Now, <clears throat> I said I would tell you why I haven't posted. Well, I didn't post anything last week because my older sister was visiting from Austin, Texas, because my birthday was last week, and we were busy every day. It was a great visit, and we had a lot of fun. Well, until next time you and I visit, Lehitrot and Baruch Hashem.